I have not uploaded a video in ages and I am just gonna explain why I haven't and why I probably won't for a while in February of 2020 we moved to a different state and the very next month they started the lockdowns so I started essentially homeschooling five children from kindergarten through ninth grade. I suddenly had no time because we were renting this three bedroom duplex for a family of eight, trying to figure out where we actually wanted to buy in our new area. And it was crazy, especially since everything was locked down. Since then, I have been so exhausted that like I'm not even dressed up. I mean, that's not really what I'm about either way, but before getting vaccinated for COVID, I wanted to do a full checkup at the end of 2019 and, you know, kind of intermittently throughout 2020, I would have little attacks of AFib, which is another way of saying that your heartbeat goes irregular. So we did full labs on me in July and my iron was low and my B12 was low. And this put me on this whole series of tests. We tested my entire GI tract, which was totally normal. I'm like, not even a polyp or a node or anything like that. Totally healthy. Uh, we did a biopsy of my stomach and to see whether or not I had a buildup of negative bacteria, totally fine. We tested for celiac, that came back negative. I mentioned to my doctor, I was like, you know, I had a DNA test and it said that I have a mutation on the MTHFR gene. You know, a lot of people in the population actually have mutations on that gene. And they don't always have side effects. So when I saw that on my DNA test, I was like, oh, well, okay, it's nice to be aware of that. I'm not having side effects currently. I'm not gonna worry about it at the moment. My doctor had me tested for IFBA, intrinsic factor blocking antibodies. So it can also be binding antibodies. And it's also known as pernicious anemia. The antibodies, well, auto antibodies, because it's an autoimmune disorder, they go and they stop or bind to uh, the B vitamin and they prevent it being processed and passing into your bloodstream. Then you're not going to be able to absorb iron and have iron bonding to your blood cells and you become anemic. But there are other side effects like brain fog. That one has been the worst. It's been, I hate brain fog. Uh, I've always had this like really strong memory and brain fog is like I will wander around the house and like not even know where I am. So if you can kind of imagine having something like dementia, it's really what it feels like. It makes you really ineffective and it really stinks when you're trying to help like, you know, five kids get through school. <laughs> And then there's also neurological damage that happens. So tingling in my hands. And I thought, oh, this is just tendonitis. Uh, it's just because I've been renovating this new house. It just like the feeling in my hands, I couldn't get rid of it. There's another side effects of, of pernicious anemia that I hadn't been aware of. And there are other side effects that you can look up. Needless to say, so I'm going through this process right now of trying to figure out my best treatment plan. And I still have kind of like bad days, but I do have good days again, which is great. Like when I first started taking iron again, I almost felt manic because I could not remember the last time I felt that good and had that much energy. Just for years, it felt like waking up dead. Like I cannot explain it other than that. And just really being a zombie and kind of forcing myself to get things done and not having emotional energy to deal with stress or people and just feeling like a horrible mom because I felt like I wasn't as patient or as loving as I wanted to be. 
And so suddenly having patience and it's been wonderful. The treatment for pernicious anemia generally is to bypass the digestive system altogether and to inject vitamin B directly into the bloodstream. If I can take oral vitamins, that is my preference. I've now been to a dietitian and when we take my next set of labs, we're going to try to figure out whether or not taking oral vitamins is actually going to work for me. I have to take methylated B vitamins and the dietitian said to take chelated iron. So I've been taking uh, these vitamins, trying to get my levels back up. One of my sisters had asked me to do a video about, you know, IFBA, and I thought, uh, I really don't want to, but, you know, it's just something that I finally decided to do because I wanted to explain why I'm not uploading. And I actually have footage of cleaning up puke off my rug, my hand-woven Iranian bijar rug. That was brain fog. That's an example of brain fog right there. I know what a bee jar is. Ugh. But in the meantime, wanted you to know why I'm not posting. And if you're out there and you also have IFBA, pernicious anemia, um, comment, definitely comment. I'm curious about treatment. It's not like, you know, getting the shot is the worst thing on earth. I can tolerate that, but my preference is definitely to be able to control my treatment in a better way than that. So that if anything happened, like if I decided to travel for three months, then I would have access to the things that I need to treat my condition. You know, they have actually a society in the UK uh, the Pernicious Anemia Society, but they don't really have anything in the United States that I've seen. I thought that there were always reasons for me feeling like I did, and honestly, there kind of always were. I feel like I've always been renovating a house, or pregnant, or <laughs> nursing. I mean, there's just, it's just it's non-stop, especially when you have a large family. I would wake up and I would be so exhausted that the thought of wiping off my kitchen counters was almost overwhelming. And for me now, I look at it and I think, that should not be overwhelming. <laughs> so if you're at the point where that is overwhelming to you and you're telling yourself, I have depression, there are three things that cause depression. One is a vitamin deficiency. Two is trauma. Like, hello the past year and a half. <laughs> hello COVID shutdowns, right? But you have to understand that, you know, having your vitamin levels, right, help you deal with trauma and stress. And then the last one is an actual chemical imbalance, like where physiologically your body is just never gonna get there. But that means that two of those three causes of depression are treatable through therapy, whether it is, uh, you know, vitamin therapy or counseling. Just throwing that out there. If you find that basic, simple tasks are overwhelming, definitely get checked out. My preference is always to go and get my blood work done first because it's so common now for people to be vitamin D deficient, for people to be deficient in so many different trace minerals or things that we need to support a healthy body and we need a healthy body to help support healthy emotions and a healthy mind. I know, blah, blah, blah. I'm not a guru. If it takes a while for me to do anything on my channel again, now you know why. Once I'm able to get uh, my pernicious anemia under control, fingers crossed you guys, pray for me that it happens sooner rather than later. Once I get that taken care of and school's rolling again, then hopefully I can start posting useful content. I, I love being able to knowledge share with people. So if you have knowledge to share about pernicious anemia as a condition, please do post it in the comments below. Like I said, I just got diagnosed like two months ago. I'm really, really hoping 
that I could do the oral vitamins. If those work for you, let me know. If they don't work for you, let me know that too. Bless you all. I hope that I will be able to get back on here soon.